This is an interesting process. The left hand holds a scraper, the right hand holds a flame gun. Both activities take place simultaneously with the purpose of scraping off the remaining rubber on the tire surface. This is a task that F1 racing cars must perform after each race. The main purpose of this is to check the wear level of the tires. Based on the measured data, we can infer when to change the tires during the race. In these top-tier car races, both the engine and the body have reached their maximum state. Besides the driving skills of each racer, the timing of tire replacement has become the biggest advantage. To provide better traction for the racing car, molten tires are the best choice. When the surface temperature of the tire reaches 90 to 110 degrees, that is the best state of this type of tire. At this time, the tire can provide good traction and friction for the racing car. However, the problem also arises here. In this high temperature state, the rubber on the tire surface will gradually melt. Most of the fallen rubber will get stuck in the road cracks, especially in the corner area. The fallen rubber from all vehicles will concentrate here, and besides the fallen rubber, high temperature tires will also stick to the rubber debris on the ground. When accumulated to a certain amount, the traction effect of the molten tire will greatly decrease. If you don't change the tire to save time, you might lose control at the next corner. Therefore, after the race, the technicians will scrape off the rubber on the tire, then use a ruler to record the depth. Based on this, they can calculate the best time to change the tire. It can be said that if the opponent's technique is higher than yours, as long as the tire is changed well, you can still overtake. Isn't this surprising? How can we both protect the environment and effectively clean up aquatic weeds? By steering a small boat along the lake surface, the fan will collect the floating weeds, and in the moment of lifting the fan, the weeds will be uprooted. The machine also has a design of a mechanical arm for cutting grass, which can easily cut plants under a meter of water. Through stirring techniques, when steering the mechanical arm along the riverbank, the riverside weeds will be easily cleaned. You need to know this type of aquatic weed grows and reproduces very quickly, and in just a few days, the weeds have covered the entire pond. The traditional cleaning method is to use chemicals, directly sprinkling them on the weeds, railing on pesticides to complete the weed killing. But this will cause serious destruction to the aquatic ecosystem. Therefore, people think of using machinery to kill weeds instead of using chemicals. And this aquatic weed killing boat has been invented. In terms of power, this boat is equipped with a professional twin screw engine, which has great power but is not entangled by weeds. The weed cleaning mainly relies on its special fan. The weed killing fan consists of 12 iron bars. When Traveling on the water, the iron bars will insert into the gaps of the weeds. Finally, when lifting the fan, the weeds will be completely uprooted to prevent some sparse weeds from not being collected. The machine is also equipped with another type of weed collection fan that is smaller in size but has the same function. This is a special type of water dam. When a flood comes, without human intervention, it can quickly deploy a temporary flood barrier. With waterproof polyethylene material, it can turn dry ground into a water pond. Its special feature is that it can create a water dam with water. When opened without an anchor, it will block water with the weight of the water and apply pressure to the bottom to fix the front by creating friction with the ground to ensure no water leaks from below. The top part will rise in proportion to the amount of stored water in the middle it is sewn back by locking the nose. Under the condition of no tearing, it can effectively intervene in flood disasters. With its durability, there is no need to worry about the pressure of cars. Compared to using traditional sandbags, it eliminates the complicated process of packing and deploying. One person can deploy quickly, reducing the time and cost needed for installation. It can be applied to many work purposes, not only has the ability to prevent floods, but can also be used to guide water and extend the installation time when installing pipes in special areas. Of course, it can also store water for agricultural use. Whether in providing drinking water or storing water, it can display excellent performance. Facing widespread floods with the fixed combination of nylon zippers, it can stand firm as a mountain. After use, open the water drain valve at the top, remove excess water and fold it to reduce. The collection work will be completed. Do you find this type of water dam useful? Attention, this machine is currently harvesting rice with fixed width guidance. Unlike healthy rice, they all lie flat in the rice field, so traditional harvesters cannot be used. However, this machine can harvest both healthy and unhealthy rice alike. The harvested rice will automatically be separated, and excess straw will be crushed and discharged from the rear of the machine, serving as field fertilizer. The main reason for this miraculous operation is its special harvesting mechanism. During operation, the front guidance system will first float the rice properly, and the bottom blade will cut the rice at the root. 
At that point, the chain will convey the rice into the machine. Inside, the threshing drum has been working for some time, and the continuously rotating drum will knock the straw off the rice onto the screen below, where it will be conveyed and directly crushed. The straw on the screen will continuously shake forward and fall onto the shaking plate, which has multiple layers, causing the straw to continuously fall downward. During this process, the supplementary machine will blow selected impurities to the rear, and ultimately, the straw at the bottom will be very clean. When the grain tank is full, using the machine's built-in conveyor, the grains will be directly transported onto a transport vehicle. The machine's working efficiency is very high. It can harvest 10 mu of rice fields in an hour. Regardless of whether your rice is horizontal or vertical, it can still be harvested. How about that? Isn't it amazing? Are you curious about how irrigation canals are built? They are dug bit by bit using this ladder-shaped shovel. The canals dug out are not only very straight, but also have a very smooth surface. The size of the shovel can vary depending on the size of the canal. The canals dug out also have different widths and depths. Some canals are even designed in the shape of a half circle, which requires changing to a corresponding shaped shovel. After completing this step, surface reinforcement work must be carried out. Pouring concrete is quite complicated, but workers can directly lay a layer of fabric. It's called reinforcement mesh. It is mainly made of concrete and fibers. It is laid flat layer by layer in the canal, then watered. The concrete will harden and bond tightly in the canal. Additionally, you can also use a rotating metal roller to roll over the concrete surface, shaping it into the form of the canal. It was specifically invented for laying concrete in canals. It's very convenient to use. Two workers stand on each side, and the metal roller rotates. The workers push the metal roller forward steadily. While continuously rotating and advancing, a smooth and flat canal will be completed. There are many versions of it, and if the canal is a bit smaller, you can choose a smaller metal roller. Did you know how irrigation canals are made? This is an interesting marking technique. Even though you see white mist continuously spraying from the mark on the animal's body, cows and horses do not feel pain during this process. It is called the liquid nitrogen marking method. You need to know that, in the past, the traditional marking technique was to place a burning hot mark directly on their bodies. The strong burning sensation not only made the animals unbearable, but sometimes even humans had to endure. However, using liquid nitrogen frozen marks to mark has significantly reduced this pain and can even be completed without feeling. Initially, to mark better, they will shave the hair at that location. When the skin is exposed, they will take the frozen mark from the liquid nitrogen box and place it directly on it. Due to the extremely low temperature, frostbite will paralyze the animal's nerves, gradually losing sensation to the marked skin. To ensure the effectiveness of the paralysis, sometimes before marking, they will spray a layer of alcohol or water on it. When the cold mark contacts, the temperature will drop once more. During the marking process, the entire time needs to be strictly controlled, usually controlled within 30 seconds. If the time is short, the mark is not clear. If long, it can easily damage the skin. Notably, besides being painless, unlike traditional high temperature marks, this method does not make the marked part hairless, but destroys the hair follicles under the skin. After a period of swelling, the regrown hair will become white, creating a clear difference with the natural hair around. The mark is clearer and never fades. On the ground is a special platform. A chair is placed on it and you can sit down. Just wave your hand and you can control it to move. When standing on this platform, you can go in any direction without ever leaving the platform. This is Disney. They invented a walking platform specifically for the VR field. Its name is Holotile. It is composed of thousands of independent platforms. Each platform includes a central axis and four wheels around. At the same time, it is equipped with sensors and independent motors. Before this was invented, users using VR glasses to enter the virtual world often forget they are in the real world. An unintentional dodge or sprint can cause an awkward situation. But with this platform, everything is different. During the movement, the sensor will transmit the foot movement of the person into the computer every moment. Even a slight change in angle, the system will accurately analyze and control the motor to change the angle of the wheels around. No matter where your feet step, it's like stepping on a treadmill. This is also why, no matter which direction you go, you can't leave the platform, and the size of the platform can be changed according to personal needs. It can be used simultaneously for two players at the same time. Thus, the basic problem has been solved, but still have to watch out for small animals in the house, and should have a separate space for the game. How do you evaluate this invention?
After a heavy snowfall, not only the roofs but also the car tops are covered with snow, especially the snow on the car top seems unnoticeable. However, when the car breaks suddenly or turns abruptly, the snow on the roof can slide down with the car, obstructing the view and even causing serious traffic accidents. Usually this situation only happens to large vehicles. Because their height is too high, it is very difficult to clean with ordinary tools. To reduce the risk of traffic accidents, the snow scraper was invented. The overall structure of the snow scraper is very simple, like a door frame. The driver just needs to put the front of the car under the door frame, then press the adjustment button to let the snow scraper on top fall onto the roof. While the car is moving, the snow scraper will clean the snow on the roof. In addition, the snow scraper can also be replaced with a brush. The snow cleaning efficiency is also very high. However, their disadvantage is that they can only clean snow. The melted snow ice into an ice layer cannot be cleaned. Therefore, the second version of the snow scraper has been invented. It has three devices. The frontmost is the sawtooth roller, responsible for breaking the hard ice layer and sending it to the collection roller in the middle position. The final brush roller is responsible for rolling the snow into the collection roller. The three rollers operate at the same time. Finally, the thin snow and ice will be blown out by a high power blower. It only takes half a minute to clean a large car. Do you think these inventions are effective? Here is a scene from the rescue team rescuing an overturned truck by the roadside. Apart from the crane, there are also several large airbags placed beside the truck. It is said that they can play a crucial role. How is this possible? The situation of a truck overturning is not uncommon. Sometimes, a strong gust of wind can cause a truck to flip, but at this point, the truck is not yet damaged. The subsequent rescue operation may actually cause more damage to the truck, which seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? In the absence of any cushioning, the crane forcibly lifts the truck up. Due to inertia, the truck will start to shake violently up on hitting the ground. This can damage internal components, and more seriously, the front part of the truck can even fall off. Therefore, the airbag you see at the beginning of the video was invented. It's called catchback, a type of heavy-duty airbag. Its usage is very convenient. Place it on one side of the overturned vehicle and use a powerful air pump to inflate it. After inflation, the crane will pull the vehicle up and flip it back towards the catchback. At that point, the catchback will catch the vehicle and create a good cushioning effect, ensuring that the vehicle doesn't fall directly to the ground. Then, you'll hear a sound as the airbag is released. As the airbag bag deflates, the vehicle will be set down smoothly without causing significant shaking. This not only helps reduce repair costs for the vehicle owner, but also increases the speed of the rescue operation. Interesting, isn't it? Beautiful homes, if they want to rise, will rise. Just one day is all it takes. Standing still, a house can be lifted a meter just by placing many supporting stakes underneath. The ultimate purpose is to move the house. After the homeowner selects a new address, the house will be moved intact to that location. Have you ever seen a house moving method like this? Before moving the moving team will inspect the entire house. After ensuring that the house is sturdy enough, they will sever all connections to the ground. Next, they will dig down below the house's foundation. Upon reaching a certain depth, they will insert steel beams and supporting stakes. Hydraulic jacks are used to lift the entire house. Meanwhile, the team will assemble modular transport modules that are suitable for the size of the house and move the house onto them. Then, they will remove the supporting stakes and the house will be able to move. Construction weighing from several tens to hundreds of tons will be slowly towed by a tractor. Authorities will conduct real-time surveys, and if they encounter complex terrain, they will open paths through mountains or build bridges over rivers. If large trees stand in the way, they will cut them down, and after the house passes through, they will replant those trees to ensure no obstruction. When the house arrives at the chosen location, they will reset the supporting stakes, remove the transport platform, and continue building new foundations. Finally, the house-moving work will be completed. There's no need to move furniture and household items. No need to adapt to a new environment. Just move the house to a new place and continue living in the old house. Interesting, isn't it? 